information sent out by Benny Johnson of Turning Point USA from Iowa, where they're injecting critical race theory and anti-white blacks or victims curricula into the educational system. Examples of racism across levels. So it's got a pyramid and socially unacceptable, overt, overt white supremacy, lynching, hate crimes, the N-word, KKK, which, by the way, is true. Those are, in fact, overt, hate, uh, hate-filled things, and probably usually an example, in fact, always an example of a sense of white supremacy. I could do what I want to a black this, the point to be made about that is it's exceedingly rare today. We agree that it happened, but this is a, a long time ago. The, the conflating of the past and the present on the part of the left is one of its sort of sleights of hand. It's, a, it's a, like a little magic trick that it does. Well, give me the, you ask them for, what are examples of white supremacy? And then they give you the examples. Lynching, hate crimes, burning crosses, KKK, but they're, they're very, very rare today. Do they, do they not exist? Everything exists. So I think, I think one has to be honest about the present situation. Then it gives examples of covert white supremacy. In other words, hidden. But it's still white supremacy. And among their examples, which is what I want to go over with you, make America great again. That, that by the way, is near the top, near overt white supremacy. The claim, make America great again, is considered to be on the borderline of lynching in this pyramid. I know many people who loved the statement, make America great again, and not one of them would have the slightest sympathy with any evil done to a black human being for being black. This is just a magnificent lie. It is a way of which is what all of this is about, giving power to the left and the Democratic Party by teaching people, which is a hate-filled notion, that if you say make America great again, you are an, a, a white supremacist. I love the uh, statement, make America great again. And you would say, well, why, why America wasn't great? Well, the, I'll give you an example. In... In the 1950s, very few children in America, black or white, were born to a mother who did not have a husband. Now, 41% of all children, more than 70% of black children, are born to an unwed mother. I, I have that in mind, as do many others, as an example of making America great again where children had an opportunity to be born in a home with two married parents. Why is that racist? Isn't it racist not to wish black children have a dad in their home? Isn't that far more likely to be something that's anti-black? So when people say make America great again, that is one of the things that comes to mind, the centrality of the nuclear family. Nobody that I know of and virtually nobody, I, it's hard to me to imagine almost anyone in America. Oh, make America great again. Yeah, let's go back to where blacks cannot be served at a restaurant with a white. <laughs> the only people today for racial segregation are people on the left. They're the ones who were pro all black dormitories and black graduation ceremonies. L liberals and conservatives are not for segregation. Leftists are. So make America great again to, to brand that as a, as a, an, 
an expression of white supremacy is just is just a plain outright lie. Next, denial of white privilege. So if you deny white privilege, you are a covert white supremacist. Right. So I think of my friend Adam Carolla. Adam and I made the movie No Safe Spaces. We have gone around the country uh, doing dialogues together. I, I'm rather close to Adam. He's a terrific human being. And he speaks often of his upbringing. And it was the opposite of white privilege. It, it, it was dysfunctional in the extreme. It's an individual basis. You know what privilege exists in America? Two-parent privilege, functional family privilege. Being an American is a privilege. That's why so many people want to move to this country, including vast numbers of Africans, because everybody except Americans knows what a privilege it is to be an American. Those are the real privileges, infinitely more so than white privilege. There's values privilege. If you're raised in a home which teaches you self-control, self-discipline, and hard work, and get married before you have a child, that's privilege, but not skin color. Eurocentric curriculum, that is considered white supremacist. A Eurocentric curriculum in America makes perfect sense. America came from Europe. I would expect a Japan-centric curriculum in Japan, an Asian-centric uh, curriculum in China. That is what every culture does. It has a centric curriculum of its roots. There's, it's, it's perfectly appropriate. But there's another reason for a Eurocentric to the extent that it exists, because there is the belief in Japan as well, I might add, that much of European art and music was among the and literature was among the greatest ever. There were great Japanese paintings, by the way. There were great Japanese uh, uh, writers. Everyone acknowledges that fact. But in Japan, if you ask people, what is your favorite music? Many will say Beethoven or Bach. There are more orchestras per capita in Japan playing Beethoven than in the United States. So is that a Eurocentric curriculum in Japan because Japan is white supremacist? It's a little absurd, is it not? Everything the left says is absurd. Liberals I do not include with the left. They unfortunately defend the left. That's a separate issue. But leftism is just always wrong. It's a very destructive force. This is a perfect example. Make America Great Again is not white supremacist. Denial of white privilege is not white supremacist. Eurocentric curriculum is not white supremacist. Next, mass incarceration. There's a very simple question to be asked. Why is a disproportionate number of black males in prison? Notice, not black females. Truly, one would imagine that if the country were putting blacks in prison for no good reason, that would include black females, but they're not. Black males are in prison disproportionately because black males disproportionately commit violent crimes. That's the reason. That's not anti-black. It's just pro-truth. If you care about blacks, you want to figure out why is that happening. So here is a hint. 85% of those in prison of any color for a violent crime did not grow up with a father. Okay? That's not a color issue. That's a father issue. What else? Let's see. Celebration of Columbus Day makes you a white supremacist. Well, here's an interesting question about that. If everything having to do with Columbus is to be rejected, why hasn't Columbia University changed its name? Can't get more woke than Columbia University. It's about as left and as anti-intellectual a university as you can find in America. I went there, I know. So why don't they change their name? 
Why do we drop Columbus Day, but not Columbia University? Columbia University comes from Columbus. That's, that's what it is. Could have been Columbus University, but it's Columbia. Because if they change their name to Indigenous Peoples University, they'd get uh, much less funding and far fewer students would apply because it wouldn't have the same clout as the name Columbia. So they're phonies. They want money. This is all baloney about Columbus Day. It's all, and Columbia University is proof. Columbus, Ohio is proof. Why doesn't Columbus, Ohio change its name to Indigenous People, Ohio? That's what they changed the name of the holiday to. That's what, they're, that's what you're being taught at school as examples of white supremacy. By the way, do you know any white supremacists? I don't. If you are one, drop me a line.